Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester two, routing and switching essentials. This is chapter six, static routing. Chapter six is divided in five sections. We have sec section 6.1, static routing implementation. Then we move on to section 6.2, configure static and default routes. That, and then on section 6.3, we review classless interdomain routing and variable length subnet masks. Then we move on to section 6.4. Here we configure summary and floating static routes. Then section 6.5, troubleshoot static and default route issues. Section 6.1, static routing implementation. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain the advantages and disadvantages of static routing. Explain the purpose of different types of static routes. How to reach remote networks. A router can learn about remote networks in one of two ways. It can either learn them manually, where remote networks are manually entered into the routing table using static routes, or dynamically. Remote routes are automatically learned using the dynamic routing protocols. So we have directly connected networks and remote networks. You don't need to tell the router uh, about directly connected networks. It will learn them automatically. About remote networks, uh, networks connected to different routers, you can learn them one of two ways. You can, as administrator, type them manually, what to do, how to get the remote networks, or you can let the routing protocols learn them automatically. Why use static routing? Static routing provides some advantages over dynamic routing. So for example, static routines are not advertised over the network, resulting in better security. Static routes use less bandwidth than dynamic routing protocols. No CPU cycles are used to calculate and communicate routes. The path of static routes uses to send the data is known. So three advantages here we have. Security, so static routes, they don't advertise about any, any of the static routes you, con you have configured. They, they don't use any bandwidth, they don't use any CPU cycles or any processing power to create the static routes because they are manually, you are entering them manually. And then you as administrator, you know exactly what the path is going to take, a packet is going to take to get to the destination. Disadvantages of static routing. Initial configuration and maintenance is time consuming, especially if you have large, many static routes to configure. That is going to be time consuming to configure at, at every router. And because you are configuring manually large number of, of static routes, the configuration is error prone, especially in the large network. Like for example, as you type in static routes, you know, at one point you can you could make a mistake. Administrate intervention is required to maintain changing route information. So every time there's a change on the route information, you as administrator you have to go there and update your static routes. Now this does not scale at all. You know, it is easy, it's, it's okay for small networks, but when it gets to the large networks, no way. You can't, you can't keep up to date, you can't maintain that static routing. Requires complete knowledge of the whole network for proper implementation. So you as administrator, you need to know the whole network, how it looks like, and what the best path for the packet to get to the destination and so on, for you to implement a proper uh, static routing. There's times when you have to use the static routes and there's time when you don't want to you don't have to use static routes. So static routing has three primary uses. First, it provides ease of routing table maintenance in smaller networks that are not expected to grow significantly. So for example, you can maintain the routing table, very small routing table, it's not going to grow, you can maintain it with the static routing. It will be worse if you're using dynamic routing just for few networks of remote networks. Routing to and from stop network. A stop network is a network accessed by a single route and the router has no other neighbors. We'll see that very soon in the upcoming slides. What is the stop network? Using a single default route to represent a path to any network that does not have a more specific match with another route in the routing table. Default routes are used to send traffic to any destination beyond the next upstream router. So the router is going to have like a routing table. And at the end of the routing table, there's going to be a default route. What to do if it if I can't match anything or any entries on my routing table, then I'll use a default route. So static routines are often used to connect to specific network, standard static routes. For example, if you're connecting to the ISP, uh, ISP is going to create a static route towards your network. 
So if I can draw it here, yeah. So what I'm uh, trying to explain here. So here, imagine this is your ISP, yeah. I'm sorry about my terrible writing. And here is a customer A. So customer, customer A. Now ISP is going to create a standard static route how to get to the customer A. This is a standard. So I'll put a small S there. Standard static route. Very easy. Like okay, well the customer A now is a stub network. Since the customer A doesn't have any any neighbors, so ISP is going to create a standard static route towards customer A. Customer A is going to create a default route, for example, towards ISP. So any anything, any packets towards any destination is going to send it towards the ISP here, and that is the default static route, right? Now the th same thing will happen if the ISP has a, a for example, customer B on this side customer C on this side so connection to all these uh, customers now what we have the next one is summary static route summary static route is you can reduce the number of routes on your written table so imagine we have another ISP down here and instead of this ISP creating a static route to get to each customer you can say you can summarize say okay to get to all these customers of this ISP I can have a one route towards from here to here so that's called a summary static route. And then uh, backup, a floating static route, is when you have a backup route. So you have, for example, path A and path B. You prefer to use path A. In case a path A fails, you want to have another static route. You want to have a static route that is like will take over. That's like a backup route, floating static route. Standard static route. Standard static routes are useful when connecting to specific remote networks. For example, like I said, if you, if you see uh, router 2 is our, our uh, ISP, for example, yeah? So ISP is going to create a standard static route towards this customer. Imagine this is the customer. This is a stub network, yeah? Because it's got no neighbors connected to router 1. This is stub network, stub router. ISP is going to create a standard route towards this customer. And the command is very simple. You can start with go to go global configuration mode and start with IP route. That's you telling you creating a static route, and then the destination IP address with a mask. So destination is 172.16.3.0. That's the destination network address, and then network mask, which is 255.255.255.0. That is forward slash 24. Then we need to tell what is the next hop IP address. We can say exit interface here as well, or we can say the neighbor's IP address or next hop IP address. So the, the ISP has just created a standard static route towards the stub network. The next one is a default static route. A default static route is a route that matches all packets. A default route identifies a gateway IP address to which the router sends all IP packets it does not have learned or static route. A default static route is simply a static route with four zeros, four star zero as a destination IP address. So for example, the customer says, okay, all I need to know about my directly connected networks and for any other networks or any other destination the packet arrives, I'm just going to forward it towards my ISP. Or that's going to be the default route. So the default route, the command again in the global configuration mode starts with IP route. That's it that telling that it's a static route. And then you have four zeros, space, another four zeros, and then the next hop IP address. So default static routes are also commonly used for the edge routers to connect to the ISP. Okay, so this command, I just want to show you this command again. The four zeros here, that's any network. That's four zeros, zero dot, zero dot, zero dot, zero. Then we have a space, so make sure you put that space. And then another four zeros, that's for the mask. With any network, with any mask, I'm going to send it to that destination, which is the IP address of the ISP. Summary static route. So for example, uh, if you want to reduce the number of routes, the route uh, routes on the routing table, you can create a summary static route. So for example, this router one, it knows how to get to four destination from, from router one to router two. So instead of creating four like this, okay, I can get to this destination, to this destination, to this, to this, you can create one summary route. Use, this is used to re reduce the number of routing table entries. Multiple static routes can be summarized into single static route if the destination network are contiguous and can be summarized into single network address. 
the destination networks are all reachable using the same exit interface or next hop IP address. So in this case, the router one, instead of give, having all these four static routes, is going to just summarize them and just write one static route. Floating static route, like we said, is like a backup. So floating static routes are static routes that are used to provide the backup path to a primary static or dynamic route in the event of link failure. The floating static route is only used when the primary route is not available. To accomplish this, the floating static route is configured with a higher administrative distance than the primary route. Imagine that we have a, a, like a, this, this path here, from here to here is our preferred path, yeah? And say that this way we are using, I don't know, EIGRP for example, yeah? That's what we like to use. Now, say that we create a backup route and saying, okay, well, if EIGRP fails, then we're gonna use a static route here. Now, if I create a static route this way, by default, the static route has administrative AD, sorry, AD, uh, AD of one. I can't, I don't know why it's writing like that. So administrative distance of AD of one, that's our static route. So all we have to do to create this floating static route is we have to increase this uh, administrative distance. A little bit higher than EIGRP, it will be fine. So for example, EIGRP has 90, all we have to do is administrative distance of 91 and it's fine. That's a creating a, a floating static route. Usually you would create a floating static route with administrative distance, I don't know, of 254 or something. So it's very high. If the link ever fails, I will use a floating static route connection to the internet as a backup. So that's our, that's our floating static route. EIGRP has administrative distance of 90. I will configure with a static route with a higher value. So for example, you create a static route that use this path with administrative distance of 100. Accomplished by configuring the static route with a higher administrative distance than the primary route. Administrative distance represent the trustworthiness of a route. If multiple paths to destination exist, the router will choose the path with the lowest administrative distance. So here, administrative distance of 100 is higher than 90 of EIGRP. So this will be as a static route. This will not appear on the routing table, so when you do show IP route, it won't be there until the primary path fails. Thank you very much for watching this section 6.1 static routing implementation. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnichi. Next video 6.2 configuring now static and default routes. Bye bye.